This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here today co-host of After the Bell on Fox Business, Melissa Francis, Democratic strategist Julie Reginsky, National Review reporter Catherine Timp, and today's hashtag one lucky guy. Look who's back on the couch. <laughs> Veteran sports broadcaster and Super Bowl winning quarterback Joe Theismann is here, and we say he's outnumbered. I don't, you've seen a bigger line than this one. I yep. don't I don't know if you consider yourself outnumbered. But believe me, a much prettier looking line. I mean, oh, and you man. talk about the line that I see all the time. I only see one side of them. <laughs> so, so that's probably, that's part of the issue. Oh, oh, my God. I only oh. see one side of the guys up front, so that's a little bit of an issue. But it's great to be back with you. All everybody. right, well, it's, it's nice to be part of the upgrade life. in your life. That's, oh, Thanks believe for being me, here. Major upgrade. Okay, well, new and potentially troubling developments for presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. The State Department says it cannot find a single relevant email on her personal server to or from Brian Pagliano. Now remember, he worked for the agency and also set up and managed her private computer server. And it was during her time as Secretary of State. That's according to court filings after the Republican National Committee sued the State Department for those records. Pagliano was offered immunity by the Justice Department in its continuing investigation into Clinton's server and emails and whether they violated national security laws. The lack of any official emails between the two raising questions now about whether those communications were scrubbed from both their accounts. This is a big deal. Julie, I'm gonna come to you first, the, the Democrat on the couch, mm -hmm. because you have said all along you have not been in favor of the way she has handled this. I, yes, I mean, I thought she's handled this horribly. There really was no excuse for a private email server. There was no excuse for her not to be using her State Department email. I will say though, um, typically, this is first of all a lawsuit filed by the RNC, but typically when the Justice Department starts investigating all other civil lawsuits, I think, sort of take a back seat until the Justice Department is done with its recommendation. And so for me, I'm curious to see what Jim Comey, who is by no means a political hack or in the tank for anybody who's the head of the FBI, if he recommends an indictment, Democrats should accept it. But if he doesn't recommend an indictment, I would hope that Republicans also understand that there was a thorough investigation. She's been cleared, and let's move on. All right, let's talk about who this person is, Brian Pagliano. At one point, an intelligence source who was not authorized to speak on the record, so our Fox News uh, reporting staff here has been able to talk with, with this source, who said Pagliano is a devastating witness in the FBI's case in any investigation. So the fact that they, he was the guy who set this whole thing up. Yeah, how do you, how do you go through a four-year period, 30,000 emails, and yet have no correspondence between the person that set it up, the IT individual that sets it up, and Secretary Clinton at that time. I mean, it's just, the American people have to step back and say, it's virtually impossible. This is something that just cannot be real. Uh, tell us something. Say there were five, except for the one, happy birthday, Madam Secretary. That's the only well, one they found in 30,000 right. emails. You know, and you're absolutely right about this fact. How could it be possible? Actually, it wasn't. It just wasn't on the server that they're looking for, which sounds nearly impossible. So what did they do, Melissa? They went and they looked. They kind of triangulated, if you will. Mm -hmm. They looked at other people who would have been either CC'd or had access to those emails. And, Joe, you're absolutely right. There was a trail there. It just mysteriously was not on her server. There is literally no way to explain this that isn't breaking the law because either he was on the federal payroll but he wasn't doing any federal work at all so he was getting money from the government and he was essentially in a fake job that's the only way you could explain why there wouldn't be emails or they were scrubbed they were deleted and that's obstruction of justice and destruction of evidence so there's no way to explain this away where people didn't break the law and know they were doing it. Or, you know, they just didn't email each other, right? That's, that's possible. They called no, the, that's ridiculous. The IT guy yeah, no worry, email. Like that makes a lot of right. sense. Which is why when you say, I hope conservatives can let it go if there's no indictment, I can't let something like this go. I, I can't. It doesn't make well, any sense. Well, and, you know, Julie, again, Pagliano, why he's so important is because he did the home system yep. for her. He was the key IT guy. He was the webmaster, as they are called. So he would be able to tell the government in his now immunity enhanced uh, uh, a testimony now, because he's got immunity with the government, he would be able to say when, how, who, what, where, exactly how that system, who had access and to and, it, yeah. and why. And the only way immunity works, and luckily I've never, I don't know this firsthand, but my understanding is the only way immunity works is if you give up all the information they're looking for. So he may have those emails, whether the State Department finds them or not. He obviously has them and, and somewhere on his server. And the question is, is he going to turn them over to the FBI? He has to in order to get immunity. And what those emails show. But again, once that is all thoroughly vetted, and I believe it is going to be thoroughly vetted and is vetted by the FBI, 
Let's wait for their recommendation before jumping to conclusions as to whether uh, laws were actually uh, broken uh, enough to indict or not. Uh, all right, broken so enough. Part, the laws were broken enough. <laughs> part of the problem with this, where the public is concerned, Joe, has to do with the fact that people don't trust that justice will be carried out. You mentioned James Comey, the FBI director. He's already said he's personally looking at this. He wants people to know that this is a clean investigation, that sort of thing. Right. But, you know, Let's just remember this moment back in March. Univision's Jorge Ramos asked Mrs. Clinton about this, and she said, you know, he said, if you get indicted, will you drop out of the presidential race? And she responded, my goodness, that's not going to happen. That's part of the problem with all of this, that she has not taken it to the point where people even think she's taking it seriously. Well, she's not taking responsibility for what she did. I and mean, when you stop and think about the Secretary of State, and, and I was listening to President Obama one day, he talked about, he said, there are, there is top, there's top secret, and then there's top secret. Right. Well, how do you, something's top secret. It doesn't fall into two categories, in my opinion. If I'm an American citizen and I'm thinking something is top secret, it doesn't have a A, B, or C classification to it. So he was talking about what might have been in those emails. I just think it was, and he called her careless. You know, President Obama called Secretary Clinton careless. Which for is not illegal. Up. It's not illegal, but do you really think about it? Do you want someone that is in the most powerful position in this country to be that carelessly with, taking you know, care of things if, if it has to do with national security right. or it has to do with well, their servers or emails. I mean, it, it's, it, it gives us pause to stop and think about what's going to happen if. Yeah, okay. well, and she signed that document. Right. She signed that document saying that she understood the classifications and things were classified based on the content and not the markings. She signed the document that said she had taken she'd read the pages and that she got it. She understood it. You know, I, I will say, though, she has taken responsibility to the point where she said she made a mistake setting up the email server. You can't expect her to say to Jorge Ramos or to anybody else. Of course, I'm waiting to get indicted. And so if I get indicted, I'm going to drop out any politician that was the but, response. Any, and any strategist in the world would tell a politician, don't make a big deal out of this because you have an election. To run. Good luck. So, we'll, see, you know, we'll see how happens. that works out. Yeah.